All right, uh, you fuckers. It's uh, a freezing episode of... Yeah, it's uh, fucking cold in here. Uh, <laughs> fantasy football with McLove and I. I the funny is, no, 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 uh, no, I actually, before we went out to eat... It's fucking cold. Yeah, but listen to me. Before we went out to eat, I purposely threw everything up on 70. I guess... I don't know what the hell to tell you. Oh, you gotta look into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anyone how I live. See? Yeah. So, the drill is a uh, bunch of shit to talk about here. Oh, I gotta scroll all the way down. I hate you, you fucking... This sucks. So, a bunch of shit to talk about uh, in the week of football, in the week of football to come. <laughs> So let's get right on into it, and let's talk about football! Uh, let's see what we got. Anything you got? Oh, by the way, uh, I have not forgotten. I owe you $20. You, you won the bet. I was... Going to stop on the way, go to an ATM, but here's what happened. So I called Kenny because we're going to do a special episode of Scratch Sick of Thursday tomorrow for Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. And, uh, That's special. Yeah, I didn't know it is. And uh, what happened was is uh, I missed the turn to go down, and I didn't know if the store was open where I wanted to buy the tickets. Yeah. So Kenny ended up texting me back and telling me they're open at 1130. So as soon as we're out of here, you can follow me. I can get you the 20 because I'm going to be buying the tickets in the same deal. All right, here we go. Ravens quarterback Flacco out for season with torn ACL. Ravens quarterback Joe Flacco is done for the season. Thanks to a torn ACL suffered on the final drive of Baltimore 16-13 went over St. Louis. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, I'm, I'm not... Uh... I'm kind of even on Flacco. I hate I hate Baltimore. Um, he played his ass off a couple of years ago to win the Super Bowl. He got all of his money, and you know it's just, it, it it just capitalizes. You know, um, you know puts a puts a, a final on Baltimore season as a whole. They suck this year. Um, not only did they lose Flacco, they also lost their, their their running back with a broken elbow. So it was just one of those. You know, it it, it it's a bad year, and, and 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 they had a bad year, and now they can, you know, lick their wounds and, and finish out the season and maybe be a spoiler. I know they still have to play Pittsburgh again. I think they still have to play um, Cincinnati again. So maybe they can be a spoiler. Who knows? But. You know, Flacco's done. Another, uh, it seems like this year's been a, a lot of injuries to some key players. But, um, you know, he's got plenty of time to, to recoup and rest and, 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 and get ready for next year. So, big loss for Baltimore, but it doesn't really matter because they weren't uh, in contention for anything anyway. Sources say that Jones and Hardy met to talk conduct issues. Dallas Cowboys owner, general manager Jerry Jones met recently with Greg Hardy to discuss the defensive tackle's recent behavior, two sources said. Well, it, it, they should have had this talk a while ago. I mean, I think just the fact that Dallas took the chance on him knowing that he was going to be suspended X amount of games, the conduct should have already been talked about prior than, you know, then they, he does this thing on the sidelines, and then Jerry Jones is the first one to come out and say, oh, that's what I like. So um, I guess Jerry wants it both ways. I guess he likes when Hardy does it, but then now he has to come out and say we have to have some conduct talk. Look, nothing's, nothing's going to change with this guy. Um, he's a, he beats his wife. Uh, he beat her pretty bad. He's a, he's a maniac. He's crazy. Um, nobody can hold this guy down. He's a punk. You know, He's a piece of shit. This guy uh, belongs behind bars as far as I'm concerned. He's an animal, um, but a very good defensive player. He can get to the quarterback, as we saw when, you know, his first game back against New England, he was all over Brady like flies on shit. So, um, you know, you can talk conduct all they want. I don't think they actually probably didn't talk conduct uh, because there really is nothing to talk about. But if Jerry Jones wants to come out and say, like, he's trying to handle this, then great. But, um, you know, Dallas... Bottom line, Dallas needs to run the table, win all their games to, to get in the playoffs. And with or without Hardy and his conduct or whatever, you know, um, it's just a, Jerry knows what he's signing up for when he gets these clowns. And, you know, and they are true to, to, to fashion and they have no, you know, no one um, governing them, you know, because if a guy's going to go out and smack the shit out of his uh special teams coach and then then come out and say oh we like that type of stuff you know so 
um, class is out the door uh, with these with the Dallas Cowboys. So I don't feel bad for them. Um, you know, it's. It, it, I wish I could say it's too bad, but you get what you pay for. Okay, uh, Bengals Lewis penalty at end a quote phantom call. Marvin Lewis was adamant in his characterization of a penalty to put the Cardinals 15 yards closer on the winning field goal. Quote, I don't see how they make that call, end quote, the Bengals coach said. Yeah, I, it's, once again, it's, pat, you know, pass interference, right? It was pass interference? I don't know. Oh, I thought it was, well, whatever it is, it, it's, it was an iffy call, could have gone both ways. Bottom line, that um, Cincinnati didn't hold on to the lead, they choked, and Arizona won. So, yeah, he can he can blame that call, and the referee should have never been in that spot to begin with, so I don't feel bad for Cincinnati or Marvin Lewis. Former first-rounder Copels waived by the Jets. Linebacker Quentin Copels, who was selected 16th overall by the Jets in the 2012 draft, was waived by the team Monday. Hopefully New England picks him up. He's still got a lot of talent. I don't know what happened there. It's probably some some – Something happened where he refused to play or he wasn't getting along with the head coach. I don't know, but any times you cut ties with a with a first-round pick, you know, two, three years later, it's more than just his play. But um, he's got talent. Someone's going to pick him up. Excuse me. Someone's going to pick him up, and he'll be good. So uh, it, it's, it's too bad that, you know, it happened to the Jets, you know. Okay, Broncos to start Osweiler, Sid Payton versus Patriots. Brock Osweiler will make his second straight a quarter, start a quarterback in the Broncos showdown against the Patriots on Sunday while Peyton Manning will sit again. Um, yeah, Manning is, uh, they say he's going to be out for two weeks, I think. They're better off never bringing him back. Uh, he's washed up. He's on that cusp. He's probably over that cusp of embarrassing himself. Um, so uh, I don't think they should let Peyton play. Um It'd be, you know, just as far as media and all the TV bullshit and stuff, they want to see Peyton versus Brady, even though it's never the quarterback versus the quarterback. It's always just a top liner. So maybe they can actually focus on breaking down the game instead of Peyton versus Brady. And there's still no question as far as who's better, Peyton versus Brady. And um, Peyton Manning is, is what it is. He's a, he's a great regular season quarterback, one of the best regular season quarterbacks of all time. He sucks in the playoffs, he chokes, he's a baby, he bitches, he moans, he cries, he does commercials, and he likes to uh, let everybody know when he breaks records. So um, He break, also he also uh, likes better pizza. Better pizza, Papa John's, right? <laughs> Papa John's. He does some, you know, chicken parm, he tastes so good. Those those commercials are funny. <laughs> yeah, they but, are funny. The, but, uh, the Papa John's aren't, but the other stuff no, is. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and he was great on Saturday Night Live, but... Um, the, he's done. Um, we'll see what Osweiler has. I know uh, uh, the the Pats are have are injury. You know, have all kinds of injuries as well. So I think it's going to be a good game. Denver's defense is top notch, so it's going to be a grind them out game. I don't see it being high scoring, but um, uh, Osweiler, you know, he played well in his first game. So we'll see what happens. Um, the Patriots defense is probably playing their best football of the year right now, and they're getting Jamie Collins back, so that's huge. Um, but um, Osweiler or Manning, the Pats are still going to win that game. All right. The NFL and the NFLPA are investigating Keenum's concussion. Yeah. The NFL has begun a review looking into why Rams quarterback Case Keenum was not taken out of Sunday's game for evaluation under the concussion protocol. Yeah, they got some lawsuits on their hands. Um, I don't know if anyone saw this play. It was it was blatant that it, he got his head just bounced off the ground. <laughs> and, and one of the offensive – Bounced! <laughs> One of the offensive linemen goes to drag him up, and he the guy's wobbling, and he, he gets up, and he's still wobbling. Like, it was so obvious. He was sitting upside down, he said. And, and Jeff Fisher, once again, I tell you about <laughs> Jeff Fisher, who's a, who's a shady motherfucker, uh, played him. He said he didn't see the replay on the um, – which was horse shit, you know. That's why they give headphones to everybody so everyone can communicate, and they probably said, you know, he's probably concussed. So uh, <laughs> um, he played two more plays, and um, you know they yanked him. Now they're gonna have they're gonna have a they're gonna have trouble right now because it's it's so the the NFL is so big on concussions and and and. The fact that he had clearly had a concussion, they let him play two more plays and then took him out. You know, he should automatically be looked at um, right when it happened and it didn't happen. So, yeah, the NFLPA, the NFL, the St. Louis Rams have some shit, you know, that right now is probably bigger than the Rams winning or losing anymore. So, 
a guy gets a concussion, you have to take him off the field. You have to go through the protocol. You have to, you know, sit with a doctor. And I think every NFL team has a specific doctor assigned to them from the NFL who don't know anything about football. They they look at the guy's head. So they're it, it, whether or not he's gonna, you know, the the doctor has money on the game or some and says no, I need him to go out there and play, or he's betting against that team and he sends him out there anyway, whatever. But um, yeah, he got he got he got his bell rung, you know, times ten and kaplunk, uh, kaplunk, yeah, huh. right off the ground. And right then off the, the offensive ground. lineman was but, picking but, him up like we need you back in this huddle. <laughs> so that just shows you what St. Louis Rams football is. So. <laughs> A concussed kingdom is better than a normal Foles, apparently. Yes. <laughs> All right, Arians. Cards tipped off refs on Bengals' antics. Cardinals coach Bruce Arians said Monday that it's likely his team's complaints about the Bengals mimicking Carson Palmer's cadence led to a key late-game penalty call. I saw that. Yeah, it was huge. Um, huge! He was huge. For, sil- for and Silo, huge. I've seen this, and in, 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 in a lot of teams do this. Um but a lot of teams don't get caught doing it. They got caught, you know, red-handed. Um, you know, it, it, it's if you get caught, you know, doing funny business like that, um, you're gonna get penalized, and it costs them the game with the game-winning field goal, everything like that. So, definitely, Pecco is definitely, you know, he he did his own snap count, did the whole thing, and um, they got caught and they got screwed, and, and you know that just shows you what Cincinnati has to do in order to win. Especially late in the game, they got to do all these, you know, these funny type business um, t- to win the game. So uh, Marvin Lewis, you shenanigans, know, shenanigans up his ass, you know. Marvin Lewis, I think Cincinnati's coming back to to, to you know yeah. to earth, and um, it's unfortunate, but um, you know, if you get caught, you get caught. You know, everyone's looking for a, uh, for a uh, an advantage. And they tried, and they got caught. So, bottom line, they lost the game, and they deserve to lose the game. Well, Horton definitely hears a who, okay? That's my own headline for this article. Horton hears the no crowd anymore because guess what happened? Panthers defensive end Horton suspended four games for PEDs. Panthers defensive end Wes Horton has been suspended four games, and wide receiver Stephen Hill has been suspended for one game as both violated the league's drug policy. Once again, I think we talked about this with the St. Louis receiver a couple weeks ago. You know, um, if, if you're going to – actions speak louder than words. And if you're going to get suspended for four games when your team is undefeated 10-0, and 0, you know, it shows you that drugs or alcohol is more important than your team, more important than winning, more important than your paycheck, more important than feeding your kids, more important than paying any bills because – He's not gonna. He's gonna be out of money for the next four weeks. So, um, but you know, as long as he got high or drunk that night and did something stupid, you know, it's all wor- worth it. So, you know, I don't. There's no room. There's no room for that in the NFL. You know, it's not a. It's not a one man sport. It's a 53 man sport. And if one guy is gonna go out and do that, I would just cut him. I'd say fuck, fuck. You know, <laughs> if you're go get drunk and high, and you know, we'll see you later. But. Um, you know, it's too bad that that people still put that, that stuff in front of everything else that's going on in their life. You know, you got teammates counting on you. You got other – and then the receiver, I've never heard of him, so, it, you know, <laughs> he, he can do whatever he wants. But um, it's too bad. You know, we still have these knuckleheads out here that, in you know, that that do, do their own thing. And no matter how many times you tell them and no matter how many times the NFL says – Look, you're going to get suspended four games if you do this again, and they do it anyway. He's probably going to do it again and get suspended eight games. So uh, no matter how what you tell these guys, it's like, Hardy, you can you can sit there all day long, and it's just like one ear and out the other. They're never going to listen. They're going to do their own thing. And it's unfortunate that uh, the team has to be penalized for a single act by you know a stupid motherfucker. Brady penalty appeals arguments set for March. A federal appeals court has set a March date for oral arguments in the NFL's appeal of a ruling oral, lifting. Oral arguments. Yep, yeah, oral arguments uh, of a ruling lifting New England quarterback Tom Brady's four game suspension in the deflate gate controversy. Controversy. <laughs> right now <laughs> right now it's not it's not about Brady anymore, um, which they should just drop the Brady thing. That the NFL right now is going against the NFL the, the NFL PA right now as far as the whole collective bargaining agreement where they agreed to the fact that Goodell has judge and jury, and, and, and obviously not because the judge overtook him, uh, the decision, which was the right thing to do, which shows that Goodell shouldn't have judge and jury because he's a fucking idiot when it comes to it. 
if, if the bad decision needs to be made, Goodell will make it, and you know, and now they're they're just holding on for dear life, so they don't look even stupider than they already are. Um, if they were smart, they just drop the whole thing, let it go away. No one would be talking about it anymore because um, you know Brady deserved to, deserved to play. The judge made the right ruling because he's you know has half a brain um, more than Goodell and his you know cronies, um, but. I think it'll get. I don't see Brady ever sitting out, so I think this is more of an NLP, uh, NFL PA versus the NFL. And um, Martha and Martha can you know sit there and, and touch herself if she wants to, because she's abroad. See, she's abroad. Rams Fisher was unaware of Keenum condition. We just yeah. Rams coach Jeff Fisher after the NFL announced <coughs> it would review the circumstances around Case Keenum's concussion said he didn't know of his quarterback's concussion symptoms. Which is absolute horseshit. I mean, there's no way in hell. I mean, look, he's the head coach of the team, okay? Whether he can see the, 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 the scoreboard, which in all these stadiums you cannot miss, okay? <laughs> unless he's just out of it, unless he had a concussion himself and missed those plays, that's the only, that's the only thing that would, you know— not let him know what his his quarterback just did. Okay, they've got half the coaching staff up in the box above. They look there. The TV screen is right in front of them. They're gonna probably whisk, you know, uh, te- telephone down like you know he's fucked up. Like he's not. He's wobbling. I mean, he wasn't even walking straight. He didn't know where he was. He didn't know what day it was. He didn't know what was going on. And they still had him, you know, um, take snaps, which. Shows you how confident they are on their backup that they're going to let a loop de loop that you know take snaps and try to win games. So once again, I think this is um, this is once again uh, Jeff Fisher. You know, at his worst, he's losing it. Um, he's on this guy's play concuss, which you know could come back to you know not hurt him, but the team could get sued, the NFL could get sued, the NFL PA could get sued if if Case Keenum really wants to take it that far. So um, he looks like a chipmunk. Yeah. He does, and, and and what are you gonna do? There's no, I mean, there's no room for chipmunks. You can't football. take it back, and and it's this is not 1992 anymore. This is not 2002 when you can just got, get a guy out there and say, oh, I didn't know he was concussed. I mean, <laughs> you know, my 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 little niece who's three years old knew he was concussed, and she knows nothing about football, <laughs> but she can tell that football. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, they they're just digging their own hole. This concussion thing is huge. It's fucking huge right now, and and, and it's it's, it's scary. Yeah. So now if he had got a concussion and then got another one after there and, and somehow <laughs> fucking died two days later, then then there's a lot of trouble. So it's a lot of shenanigans. Shenanigans. Tom Brady's call at the line of scrimmage. Rex Ryan. The Buffalo Bills Twitter account had a humorous response to Tom Brady yelling Rex Ryan at the line of scrimmage during Monday's game, which I don't know what it was. He said Rex Ryan in an audible. He also said Scooby Doo. I didn't hear him so, say Scooby Doo. He said Scooby Doo, really? Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. He, he said Scooby Doo. He said Scooby Doo and Rex Ryan, and, and they asked him about it, and he said it was just an, an audible call. He had nothing to do with you know Rex. Um, well, that's what he says, but I'm sure they were making fun of him, um, which is fine. The, the quarterback can make any any audible call. I think unless it's uh, referring to the uh, the ref's wife or his daughter. I think he can pretty much say anything he wants at the line. Um, you know, it's it's something uh, for us to talk about, and it doesn't really mean anything. Um, fuck. Um, so, uh, yeah, he did it, and we'll go from there. Okay, let's see here. NFL on whistle halting Pat's play. Quote was a mistake. Oh, my God. A referee inadvertently blew his whistle on a pass by Tom Brady to Danny Amendola, limiting the Pat's yardage and leading to controversy over how the NFL's dead ball rule was enforced. These officials on on um, Monday night were, were was atrocious. Atrocious at best. This play, I've never seen a play like this. You know, Brady's rolling out. Everyone and their mother think he's just going to throw the ball away. He finds Danny Amendola... Who would untouched in the end zone? I don't give a. I don't care where the nearest defender was forty yards away. He was going to run in for a touchdown. Almost put the go up by uh, fourteen points. Put the game out of reach. The ref blows a whistle. He was trying to anticipate the play and he fucked up. Um, and then they what they did was they they allowed the catch. They said the whistle 
happened after the catch. All the replays show that it wasn't even close. The whistle happened before the catch. Um, then they tacked on another 15 yards. Uh, they said Rex Ryan was, was in front of the ref, and that's the reason he blew the whistle. So they tacked on it. They, they still missed the field goal. So if that had come back to beat them, then, then I would have been irate. I know uh, New England would be irate because, once again, these officials, all they want to do, do is me, 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 me. And, and I don't know if you noticed, but they were discussing it for about 20 minutes. Um, I had a buddy who was, um, you know, at the game, and he just said, you know, it was freezing cold, and they, they, they were sick of waiting. So um, it's, it's unfortunate that the refs have to, again, you know, stick their beak in when they just just let the guys play football you guys are not there to be on tv and and once they get that through their head you know maybe we'll have stop having these fucking dog shit you know calls that don't need to be made don't assume th something wait for the guy to either throw the ball and then blow the whistle don't blow the whistle dead because technically speaking that play should have been a do-over yes do-over like you know like sixth grade kickball you know a do-over Technically by the book so they they knew they fucked up and that's why they gave New England the, the, the benefit of the doubt, but um, You know it's what happens. It's, when, it's what happens when zebras rule America you know? <laughs> Bills Taylor hurt and loss questionable versus Chiefs Tyra Taylor is uncertain to play Sunday against Kansas City After the Buffalo quarterback was injured Monday night quote. I hope he's ready in quote coach Rick Ryan said um Tyrod Taylor, left-handed, is better than E.J. Manuel. E.J. Manuel is uh, one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen in my life. Um, but it shows you how, I mean, shows you how bad Matt, Matt Castle is because they chose E.J. Manuel as a backup over Matt Castle. So, um, you know, that's verified down in Dallas how, how, how bad Matt Castle is. But if E.J. Manuel plays, they're going to lose um, for sure, no doubt. Uh, there's no way in hell E.J. Manuel is going to win a game for them, not in a million years, never in a million years. He's irrelevant. He sucks. He, he's bad. He's, he's, a, he's a clown. He's a bonehead, and he can't win football games. And, and, and it's unfortunate because I like watching Tyrod Taylor play. He's a good quarterback. And he's done really, you know, I guess, I think the team is like 5-0 and or 5-1 and one as him as a starter, which shows you how bad E.J. Manuel is that they came and win a fucking game with him. So um, it's it, it's going to hurt, um, and they will lose with E.J. Manuel as a starter. So I think 35% of Tyrod Taylor is better than 100% of E.J. Manuel. Bradford admits to memory loss after concussion. Eagles quarterback Sam Bradford said he had memory loss after suffering a concussion earlier this month. He has been cleared from the concussion protocol, but is unsure if he will play on Thanksgiving. This guy's a pussy. Um, it doesn't matter, but uh, everyone has memory loss after a concussion. So just the fact you realize that you've had memory loss, how do you even know that you're, you forgot that? And you know what I'm saying? So concussion, everyone's going to have memory loss. It's a fact. Um, but if he wants to come out and say that... And, See this guy he's not he's not this is why he never wins is he has no balls you know if he can if he's cleared a, a quarterback that's competitive that wants to win that that will, would play now this guy you know he's on the fence he's probably going to want to watch the the uh, game at home on his couch with some blankets and some pillows and with his dog and you know maybe some flowers and you know a cup of milk and you know because his head he might have a little headache so Sam Bradford um, is terrible, terrible quarterback. Um, Philly, you know, Sanchez, I mean, Sanchez actually would play. I mean, Sanchez has got more balls. He sucks, but he's got more balls than Sam Bradford. Sam Bradford's a scary little guy, and that's why, you know, his injuries and, and this and that, he, he's just not a competitor to me. Fisher rips Rams critics irked by John Harbaugh. Rams coach Jeff Fisher fired back at critics who have accused his team of dirty play, saying the Ravens in particular, quote, need to take a look in the mirror. Well, uh, first of all, I, I think I've been saying this for how many weeks about Jeff Fisher and how dirty he is and how dirty Greg Williams, who is involved in the shenanigans. Um, with Bounty Gate. With Bounty Gate. Greg Williams. Now, the one thing I do agree is with Jeff Fisher is that Baltimore, it's like calling the kettle black. Baltimore is as dirty as they come. Um, they're, they are shady. They're dirty. 
They had, you know, the, uh, a murder, you know, a, a, a double murder uh, was patrolling their linebacking core for about 15 years. So obviously they didn't have any problems with hurting people because, you know, they're promoting murders just like ESPN does. And I don't know if you guys, did you watch the, the, the post game at ESPN? Uh, after after the, the uh, New England game? No, I shut uh, it right off because I had to go to sleep because we had to work tomorrow. They do, they do the four people down in the field. Steve Levy, you know, Steve Young, um, Trent Dilfer, and then the murderer. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's got this hat on. He looks like a pimp. You know, he's got this, the, the, the suits. He's just an idiot. And, and just the fact that ESPN is, is willing to, you know, same thing with OJ. And I don't care what anyone says. You know, OJ murdered him, and we all knew he murdered him, but yet he, got, he was not convicted. Everyone knows that Ray Lewis had something to do with these murders. We still can't find his white suit. I don't know where the fuck that is. And, and now he's on ESPN like nothing happened. No, like he, him and his guys murdered and, and, oh, God forbid we talk about it. Don't ask Ray about it. Don't, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm not talking about that. Why not? Because you have no fucking answer because you know you're guilty. <laughs> but ESPN doesn't care. They let him go on there and do his fucking, his show, and he looks like a clown. And the, I, uh, a lot of other names I can't say out loud right now. That's how I feel about Ray Lewis. He's dirty. The, the Baltimore's dirty. They're all dirty. So back to the point, Jeff Fisher does have a point. Um, that Baltimore has no business calling St. Louis dirty, but they're both dirty teams, and, 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 and Jeff Fisher is a dirty coach. All right, so here's the situation. Johnny Manziel was supposed to start the rest of the year for the Browns. He was caught partying on his, on the bye week, uh, and he after he promised Coach Mike Pettin that he would not do anything foolish, wouldn't party, etc. He got he got caught. So now the Browns are starting Josh McCown over Johnny Manziel, a quarterback. I think Johnny's days are over um, in Cleveland, and I wish we could go back. Uh, I think it was three or four shows ago when I sat here and told you, as someone in recovery, that until he gets until he gets sober and remains sober, he's going to keep on doing this because. I, I I was at fault too. I would say, you know, I'll never do that again. And then the next night, I was out doing it again because the disease takes over everything, and no one can beat the disease on their own. And I'm telling you that for a fact. He needs help. He needs to be in a, in a place for about a year, getting himself because because if he keeps on going down this road, he's gonna kill he's gonna kill himself. He's gonna get into drug driving. Only bad things can happen when when you're when you when alcohol and drugs control your life and this guy has the world by the balls he's got the world by the balls he's got all this money everyone loves him he sucks as a quarterback but you know all that being said you know he's he's wasting his life you know he's throwing everything away and he doesn't care because if if you promise your head coach that you're not going to do it then you do it especially on your bye week then it shows a lack of lack of everything but to be honest, it's all the disease. The disease is the reason why he, he, he has to drink. He has to use drugs. Even 72 days in rehab, you know, he's back to the way it was because he didn't take that seriously. He still not has not hit his rock bottom. And unfortunately, his rock bottom could be death or it could be killing someone where it's out of Mike Penn's hands, where it's out of the NFL's hands, and you're, you're Aaron Hernandez and you're behind bars for the rest of your life. So this guy needs a wake-up call. Um, I don't know who this is going to come from because he's obviously not listening to the, the Browns organization. Um, when this happened, you know, the last time when he got pulled over drinking and getting into a fight with his girlfriend, and he's Johnny Manziel. And Manziel so, yes, the people will know about it soon. Um, he's, he said we had this under control, and, and this is 0 for 6 now. Uh, so uh, they don't have it under control. So just come out and say we don't have it under control. We have no idea what to do with this guy. The only way we can have him stop drinking is, is to chain him to a fence or, or lock him in a, in, a, in a barn somewhere. But um, this guy's going to do whatever he wants. Um, he makes more money and then, than a lot of people on the Browns, which is which is scary because they do have some good players on there. So it's Johnny Show. Hey, Johnny Football. You know, since he was a junior in college, Johnny Football, Johnny Football. We love Johnny Football. And and he's just – he he's – Taking himself down, which is the worst way to go down, and unless he gets help, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be, you know, he'll never, well, he's never gonna be a good NFL quarterback anyway, but he'll, um, he won't be able to play in the uh, Canadian Football League either, where he deserves to play. So, report: Kaepernick had quote extensive labrum tear, 
<clears throat> Colin Kaepernick has an extensive labrum tear in his non-throwing shoulder, according to a report. Um, this is a it, it, it's clearly a uh, horse shit uh, IR thing. Um, the guy's benched, okay, and then for some reason they come out and say he tore it, so they can just put him on the IR and and and, and you know put him out the pasture because he's never going to play there again. But um. I guess he he had to have passed something, but it's just it, it just closes the door on the Colin Kaepernick experiment, and um, you know he'll get picked up by another team. I heard Washington might be interested in him, but supposedly Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia. So uh, he's still got the talent. Um, I guess his shoulder is torn, but uh, you know, <laughs> uh, whatever. But uh, he's going to be on a new club. And I think he'll do fine. He just has to get away from San Francisco, just like RG3 has to get away from Washington. Source, free agent safety Landry banned indefinitely. The NFL has suspended free agent safety LaRon Landry indefinitely, a source told ESPN.com. The reason for the suspension is unclear. I, I This is the first I've heard about it. Um, he must have done some bad. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Broncos, <laughs> Manning out at least two more weeks. Broncos quarterback Peyton Manning will miss at least two more weeks with a torn plantar fascia, the team announced Tuesday. Yeah. I guess it was all uh, the, the song and dance um, show when he passed another record, whatever, a relevant record, and they lost the game. I guess it was all worth it now that he can't walk and play football. So, you know, I don't feel bad for Denver. I don't feel bad for Peyton Manning. I don't feel bad for Gary Kubiak, you know. You know, stuff's unfair. You know, life's unfair. So don't try to tell us that poor Pan, uh, poor Manning, wah, the he can't play, wah. He's got a planter's fasciitis, wah. The Denver doesn't have their star quarterback, wah. You know, it's it, it's probably doing you a favor because the last time he, he he was throwing a volleyball, he looked like a fucking right-handed Michael Vick. Giants tight end Donnell dealing with new neck issue. Larry Donnell's season could be in jeopardy after an MRI revealed the Giants tight end is dealing with a new problem with his neck. Yeah, it's not good. Um, anytime you're talking about the neck, um, that it's just a scary area because football is such a violent sport. If he gets, if he's playing with a hurt neck and he all he has to do is twist one way and he doesn't walk again, you know, he's better off just you know hanging him up. Um, but, yeah, anytime you're talking about the neck and the head, you know, forget about it, shut it down, um, and, you know, hopefully he can stay safe. And um, he's a decent player. I wouldn't say he should play because he's just a decent player. But if he was a, if, if he was a great player, then, yeah, I, I think it's worth him, you know, putting his neck on the line, no pun intended, to, to be out there with his teammates. All right, so the Ravens Harbaugh has a response. Ravens Harbaugh, <laughs> I never insinuated Rams dirty. Ravens coach John Harbaugh said Wednesday that he never insinuated that the Rams were a dirty team and that Jeff Fisher likely was, quote, misinformed about his comments. He's full of shit. They're both full of shit. Jeff Fisher's <laughs> full of shit. Harbaugh's full of shit. Harbaugh talks at he, – he is insane. If you think the other Harbaugh is really insane, he's just as insane. He's just not as expressive. Um so, um, he definitely said it. There's no doubt in my mind. I know he, 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 he's like, he's one of those guys that says something, you know, he's a, he's a shoot first back up, you know, back up later. He's always going to shoot first. He probably said something, which he probably did say Fisher snap back at him. You know, it's like a lover's quarrel, I guess. Both teams, you know, suck. I, I don't know if that was anywhere in the in the uh, in the article. They both are fucking terrible. So they can go back and part. You know, they can have a little slumber party. Maybe uh, do some back rubs. So we'll see. Blandino, refs blew second key call in Bills Patriots. Vice President of NFL Officiating Dan, Dean Blandino says the referee incorrectly kept the clock running on Sammy Watkins' final catch and the Bills lost to the Patriots. Very true. Uh, he caught the ball, and he would have been out with two seconds to go, giving giving uh, Baltimore, at, I think it was around Buffalo. the 50, uh, Bal Buffalo around the 50 for yeah. Hail Mary to tie the game. So they that wasn't even close. That that was a, All that ref wanted to do was get the fuck out. <laughs> he was freezing balls. He said, you know what? No matter what happens here, I'm ending the game. So... And it's not a reviewable play, so you're just like, let's just get out of here. I'm too cold. Let me get some hot cocoa and, you know, 
go take a shower or something like that. So uh, the guy fucked up. It, it's going to hurt him in the long run because they get every uh, every officialing squad gets graded by the NFL, and these these guys got an F. <laughs> and if there was like a G or an H, I'd give him lower than an F because it was terrible. It was, it was an absolute shit show, especially on Monday Night Football when the world, yeah, everyone's watching you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they they fucked up just about every call they could have. Ex-Cowboys Randall jailed after casino altercation. Running back Joseph Randall, who was released by the Cowboys earlier this month, was jailed early Wednesday after an altercation at a Kansas casino. I'm, I'm, I'm sure some, someone said something to him for him to erupt. I mean, these guys on Dallas, they're not, they're not choir boys. Um, they're, 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 in, they're ignorant. They, they're fucking stupid. I don't know what he did, but anytime you get barred from a casino, it's bad news. Um, he probably, you know, got, he probably thought it was a project again and he could just do whatever he wanted, act like an animal. Um, but you can't do that uh, in public places. They'll throw you out. They'll, they'll, you know, do whatever they want. But, um, you know, animals are out there, and, you know, a lot of them are on the Cowboys. So, Patton. Browns didn't discuss cutting Manziel. Browns coach Mike Patton says the team didn't consider releasing Johnny Manziel, but felt the demotion to third string, by the way, was warranted after the quarterback violated the team's trust in him. So, if you're Johnny Manziel, okay, and you just got put from starter to third string. What do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's going to act like a choir boy and start listening? No. He's a punk. What he's going to do is do his own thing now. He's done in Cleveland. And and he's just going to go out. If he's a third quarter, third, he, he's not going to show up to meetings. He, he You know... He won't even if he's in there. He's not there mentally. He's gonna go out and drink and do drugs and do whatever he wants. Have get, sex. Have sex with him abroad and you know everything like that. So, the worst thing you possibly could have done was put him as third string because now he really doesn't give a fuck. You know, you got to take him aside, get it, put him on, um, put him so, on the physical whatever. You know, just physical unable to have sex. List. Physical whatever. Cleveland is still going to lose, and, you know, it's unfortunate that, once again, Johnny Manziel is Johnny Manziel, and I don't think... So, what ha- So he's a, he's the third guy in, and what if he... Now, what if he goes... The two guys go down, and he comes in and, and, and plays like a Hall of Famer. Then what happens? Then he's the starter? Of course he is. So, you know, it's just one of those things, like, yeah, we'll keep him as a third string, just in case. So... You know, what is it, what kind of message does that send to your team? What kind of message does that send that, like, this guy can pretty much do whatever he wants, and, you know, now he's third string. So, you know, they should put take him aside, you know, baby him, do whatever, but he should not be on the roster right now. They should they should cut him. I mean, that, that's, the only, that's the only way it's going to help Cleveland. That's the only way it's going to help Johnny Menzel. Seahawks Lynch has surgery for sports hernia. This is three hours ago. Seahawks running back Marshawn Lynch underwent <laughs> Surgery Wednesday for a sports hernia injury. Coach Pete Carroll confirmed Wednesday. Yeah, yeah I think he's done for the year, right? <clears throat> I don't know. I, didn't uh, I think he's done for the year. Either way, you know, this guy. He's eating Skittles in the hospital. Yeah, he's eating Skittles. Um, beast mode. You know, beast mode, you know, on a, on a fucking, you know, um, one of those hospital beds rolling down the fucking, the, the, the hallway with his fucking torn, whatever it's called. What is it? His torn penis. His torn penis. His, her, his hernia or whatever they call yeah. It's definitely a hernia because he's a pussy. <laughs> so uh, take your beast mode and, um, you know, go to the hospital. <clears throat> Rams Bailey out of surgery following shooting. Rams wide re- Rams receiver Stedman Bailey was shot twice in the head Tuesday night. You didn't hear about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was shot twice in the head Tuesday night, a source told ESPN, and the team says a third-year player is out of surgery. Yeah, in Miami he got was shot. Was this a guy that... Got suspended? He might have been. I don't know. Yeah. So he got shot in the head um, twice. So, I mean... Um, That's what happens. Someone was unhappy with him. You know, <laughs> anytime you shoot somebody in the head once or twice, he, he must have done something wrong. He probably... Sex. You know, it, it, it's real. It's sad that we even have to talk about guys getting kicked out of casinos and, and, and guys getting shot in the head and, you know, guys beating their wives and guys getting DUIs or guys, you know... Having bomb threats on the plane, uh, guys murdering, you know, two, three, four, five people, 
you know, uh, guys going out and, and doing something stupid. Like, these guys just fucking do stupid, stupid shit. I don't know what the hell he was thinking to get shot in the head twice. You, as far as I'm concerned, if you just walk in, in, in public and you're a normal human being, no one's going to shoot you twice. I can tell you that for a fact. He must have done something. He did something. He probably had a bad drug deal or he didn't he owed the guy money or, you know, he, he was banging his broad or something like that or he, you know, said something about his kid or I don't know. But, you know, I guess if, if you got shot twi twice in the head, you probably had it coming anyway. Had it coming, see? So, unfortunately, this guy, this, this piece of shit, scum, now has to live and now we have to talk about him. All right. Transaction time, you sexy fucker. Thursday, November 19th, you sexy fucking piece of man. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, Redskins. <laughs> I'm going to compose myself here. This is a, this is a fucking professional show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. As he's drinking friendlies. All right. Release running back Mac Brown from the practice squad. <laughs> Sign running back Christine Michael to the practice no. squad. <laughs> Seahawks release defensive end Julius Warmsley from the practice squad. Sign wide receiver Douglas McNeil to the practice squad. No. <laughs> Chargers sign wide receiver Dante Foster to the practice squad. No. Okay. Raiders sign defensive end Shelby Harris from the practice squad. Wide receiver Jeremy Ross to the practice squad. No. Jets, release linebacker Quantarius Smith from the practice squad. Sign cornerback Kevin Short to the practice squad. No. Patriots, released offensive lineman Blaine Clausel from the practice squad. Signed offensive lineman Chris Barker to the practice squad. He'll probably be playing soon, but no. <laughs> Dolphins, sign linebacker James Michael Johnson. Sign defensive tackle DeAndre Coleman. And offensive tackle Chris Martin to the practice squad. No. Chiefs, release defensive tackle Hebron Fangapo from the practice squad. Who is it? Finger? What is that? <laughs> Fang Fanguapo. Fanguapo. Hebron Fanguapo from the practice squad. Signed tight end Ross Travis to the practice no. squad. Ch uh, Texans, wave cornerback J Jumal Roll. Claim quarterback Brandon Wheaton off waivers from Dallas. That's interesting. They picked up Brandon Wheaton? Yeah. Who did? The Texans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lions. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Lions, name Rod Wood president. Rod Wood? Yeah. No, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Martha. Martha. Martha's boy toy there. The Wood. Broncos, wave guard Shelly Smith, claim center Sam Brenner off waivers from Miami. No. Shelly was a man? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some Shelly's in my day. Shelly's that name. For big girls, yeah. Shelly. I, yeah. I, every Shelly I've met has been a a, a plus plus, you know, size woman. Um, so a, a lot it, of women. It could have been a, a, a broad. Uh, the Ravens place defensive back, defensive back, defensive back Asa Jackson on injured reserve. Sign running back Terrence West from the practice squad. Terrence West, there he is, again, um, just floating around like a butterfly. Friday, the Eagles play safety Jerome Copeland on injured reserve. Signed safety Ed Reynolds no. from the practice squad. <laughs> Saturday, Seahawks wave running back Bryce Brown. Signed linebacker Eric Pinkins from the practice squad. No. Chargers signed wide receiver Terrell Williams from the practice squad. Wave tight end Sean McGrath. Oh, there he is. I, I like the last name. <laughs> uh, he's a star, but yep. he's on the street. So. <laughs> Jets activated wide receiver Quincy and Nunwa from the suspended list. Signed defensive end Mike Capit Cat Catapano from the practice squad. Place running back Zach Stacy on injured reserve. Wave safety Ronald Martin. No. Texans signed run running back Akeem Hunt from the practice squad. Relax. Sorry. Yeah. When you got Akeem, <laughs> Akeem Hunt by driver. Akeem Hunt, what do you got about I'm him? A, I'm a driver, too. You got anything uh, about the Akeem Hunt? No. Okay, and then the Cowboys activated quarterback Tony Romo from injured reserve return, obviously, because he won Sunday. He won. Monday, the Redskins signed tight end Jerron Hamm from the practice squad. <laughs> Wave tight end Anthony McCoy. Signed linebackers Derek Matthews and Lyndon Trail to the practice squad. No. Release cornerback Deveron Carr from the practice squad. No. Jets, wave linebacker Quentin Copels. We talked about that. Yep. Signed safety Ronald Martin to the practice squad. Yeah, we call it. He's a player. Hopefully he's picked up by New England. But, um, 
There's got to be a lot of behind closed doors issues with this guy, so we'll see. Had sex with his man Dingo Cock. Yeah, or Oakland's going to pick him up. John <laughs> Giants, sign linebacker James Morrison, quarterback Tremaine Jacobs to the practice no. squad. Bears, wave quarterback Jimmy Clausen. Sign quarterback David Fales from the practice squad. Terminated the practice squad contract of cornerback Terrence Mitchell. Um, Jimmy Clausen, you know, uh, former uh, Notre Dame, really hasn't done much. So, yeah, he's on the street. That's what happens. That's what happens when there's zebras in America. Tuesday, the Buccaneers waived defensive end Lauren Sidbury, claimed defensive end Court Courtney Brown off waivers from Houston. No. Seahawks waived defensive tackle A.J. Francis, re-signed running back Bryce Brown, placed linebacker Nick Moody on injured no. reserve. I haven't even finished. Oh. <laughs> just, listen, just listen to the whole fucking deal. Signed wide receiver B.J. Daniels from the practice squad, placed an offensive tackle Terry Poole from on practice squad injured reserve, signed running back Juwan Harris from wide receiver Tyler Slavin to the practice squad. No. Eagles, signed wide receiver Jonathan Kraus from the practice squad, released linebacker Emmanuel Acho. No. Raiders, wave linebacker Ray Ray Armstrong. Ray Ray Armstrong. He grew up in a nice household. <laughs> Ray Ray. Any guy that's named Ray Ray probably doesn't know his last name or his father for that matter. Ray Ray Johnson. Whatever. What the Ray fuck? Ray Ray Armstrong. Ray Ray Armstrong. What? The, the first Ray wasn't enough? They had to name him twice? Give me a break. No. Je Je <laughs> Pick 930th in the draft. Ray Ray Anderson. <laughs> Armstrong. Armstrong. Jets, sign linebacker Josh Martin from Indianapolis' practice squad. No. Uh, the Saints, wave linebacker Jolon Dunbar, sign defensive end Philip Hunt. No. Dolphins, claim linebacker Quentin Copel's off waivers from the Jets. There so you the go. Dolphins picked yeah, him up. They did. It's the best decision they made all year. Wave quarterback Zach Bowman. No. <laughs> Texan, signed center Dalton Freeman and linebacker Gerald Rivers to the practice squad. Released quarterback Zach Dicer from the practice no. squad. Bears, signed linebacker Danny Mason and quarterback Justin Worley to the practice squad. No. Panthers, released guard Reese Dismukes from the practice squad. Signed defensive back Roz I. Dowling to the practice squad. The name rings a bell. Yeah. So does Father Dowling. Yeah. And so does Bell. Bear, well, you um, know Roz I. Dowling. That's him. Played for the Patriots. He did? Yeah. I didn't remember that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Bill. So I, Mr. Dowling? Father Dowling. Father, oh, I love that show. Yep, yep. Father with, Dowling. Uh, with, uh, Who is the skinny, egg? the skinny broad? I forget. All right, ready? Bill, signed defensive lineman Jarrell Worthy to the practice squad and released linebacker Kevin Reddick from the practice no. squad. No. All right, Ravens, wave wide receiver Joseph Morgan, signed wide receiver Chuck Jacobs from the practice squad and wide receiver Chris Matthews to the practice squad. You know who Chris Matthews is? The guy that does... I think the, that was the guy on the Giants in the Super Bowl. Has to be. Who, what's his name? Chris Matthews. The guy from Football. The guy Walker. that does the... Um, Not the Giants in the uh, Super Bowl, uh, the Seahawks. Yeah, it wasn't the guy that's on um, Fox News. No, Chris Matthews. I know. <clears throat> Claim quarterback Jimmy Clausen off waivers from Chicago. Oh, wow. Plays quarterback Joe Flacco on injured reserve. We talked about that. Falcons signed tight end DJ Tio Lavia to the practice squad. Wave tight end Marcel Jensen. No. All right, and then today, the Buccaneers signed defensive back Akeem Davis and, and center Ben Goschok to the practice squad. Mm -mm. Raiders signed wide receiver Jeremy Ross from the practice squad and linebacker John L Lotulele to the practice squad. No. Dolphins released offensive tackle Chris Martin from the practice squad, signed guard Anthony Steen to the practice squad. No. Colts signed offensive tackle John Wetzel to the practice squad. <laughs> no. Panthers, released offensive tackle Pierce Burton from the practice squad. Sign guard Reese Dismukes to the practice squad. No. And the Bills, released running back Dan Heron and wide receiver Denarius Moore. Sign guard Ryan Groy from Tampa Bay's practice squad. And wide receiver Marcus Thigpen. No. And I believe that uh, Broncos signed Kristen Ponder. Oh, really? Yep. They probably sign, sign him so the wife would come to the game. You ever seen his wife that yeah. works on ESPN? She's gorgeous. Oof. Really? Forget about it. Is yeah. she as sexy as fuck? Yeah. yeah like would, you have, would you have sex with her? Yeah. Would, would, if there was green stuff coming out of her vagina, would you have sex with her? Yeah. Even if there was green mold? Yeah. If she had a disease like herpes, would you have sex with her without a Herpes condom? is not that bad. So you'd fuck her if she had herpes? Yeah. Without a condom. Yeah. 
I don't see the value in that. <laughs> <laughs> and value is the most important thing that we're going to talk about today. Uh, speaking of value, guys, uh, take a comment in the comment section below if you would have sex with Christian Ponder's wife. If you knew she Sam, had herpes. Sam Ponder. Sam Ponder. If you knew she Look had herpes. Up. If you knew she had herpes and you had to do it raw. No condom. No fucking protection. Look it up. Would you do it? Answer in the comment Sam section Ponder. below. Sam Ponder. All right. Let's talk about uh, last week's uh, How Everybody Did. Yes to anything that is cool awesome went five and nine. C V Gunn went nine and five, and James LeBlanc went seven and seven. So the updated standing, C V Gunn, sixty one and forty two in first place in the Peon division, and tied for second, James LeBlanc, and yes to anything that is cool awesome, two games back at fifty nine and forty four. C V Gunn, you are getting another restaurant gift card. You had the best record last week at nine and five. Congratulations. Email me at andyvhb at AOL.com. Nice job. Uh, so I can uh, send that out as well. Those of you who are still waiting on your first ones, I have not forgotten. We finally have our days off, which, will be, day. yeah. which will be Tuesdays and Wednesdays. This is the first day off I've had in three weeks. Uh, but Tuesdays and Wednesdays are now our days off, which means starting next Wednesday, I'm going to input this here. But I'm also going to make a separate video before we air this one, okay. so that way people... But let them know. Because people may not fucking watch all the, all the way through. But Wednesday, uh, at 6.30, every Wednesday, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, we will uh, have live call-in for questions, comments, whatever the case may be. Uh, we will be recording it live and then you can call in and then you'll be on the show when it gets uploaded so what is your phone number mclovin 650-863-0699 so remember that number what about you now they're gonna call on you guys just just be be careful <laughs> Just call me just from on six thirties on uh, six thirty on Wednesday nights, please. Yeah, six thirty on Wednesday nights. There you go. All right. In our division, uh, the best record last week was McLovin at eight of and course. six. What would you expect anything less? <laughs> I've been <laughs> eight and six with McLovin. I went seven and seven, and uh, Steve Poor Goldman. Steve Goldman. Six and eight. <laughs> Steve Goldman's shit in the bed. Pissing on his leg. All right. So Patrick, you're at first at seventy and forty nine. And I am eight games back in second place at 62 and 57. And then Steve Goldman in last nine games back, a game behind me at 61 and 58. It's all over but the crying. Yep. It's all over but the shouting. Can you get the... Uh... I got the lines. Okay. Yep. All right, here we go. Football oh, on okay. Thanksgiving. Two of these games I'm going to watch. Uh, one... Because of the Eagles fan that lives in Bakersfield, California, who also has a YouTube channel, EDP445. Big-ass black dude, 700 pounds. Uh, he's How do you fucking, know him? He's hilarious. I've seen his show yeah. on YouTube. He's fucking hilarious. He just he talks about he's a huge diehard Eagles fan. Like, Can we get him on the show? The, Can he call in? It'd be awesome if he could, but there's Does no way. Does he watch your show? I, I doubt Can he even knows. Can you send him a message? I will send him a message. And let him, he's, yeah. he's a celebrity, dude. He's... He's been on Tosh.0. Oh, he's been on... I don't give a... You I'm know, just telling you, but... Do uh, they know, you know who you are? No. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you're a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I wish. It's a big deal in fucking... In our industry, I'm a big so deal. So what did he say about... Um, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did they? What did he say about the Eagles? That has he so intrigued? No, it's just... It's, he's hilarious. He throws temper tantrums when they lose. He's, he's funny. You watch him. EDP445... Uh, watch him. He does other videos. He does like two, top 200 porn stars. He does a whole bunch okay. of stuff. He's well, a funny dude. We can dude. do that too. Yeah, we could. All right. Anyway, so I'm going to be watching the Eagles Lions game because of that. And then obviously Panthers Cowboys, I'm going to be watching because the Panthers are undefeated. And they're playing in Dallas. You never know. You never know what could happen. I mean, I think Carolina's going to win, but it's going to be close. Anyway, let's go to the first game Eagles 4 and 6 at Detroit 3 and 7. And the Lions are favored by two and a half at home. Taking the Lions, yeah. minus the two and a half. Anytime you got Mark Sanchez trotting out there, <laughs> it's going to be a long day. Um, so Lions minus two and a half. They're actually pretty hot. And um, um, Mar Martha, Martha is is upbeat. She's you know doing her yoga and you know spins and you know whatever. So her uh, vaginal muscle yeah. workouts. Kegels. <laughs> Panther <laughs> Panthers ten and zero. 
uh, the middle middle game of Thanksgiving uh, feast. Panthers ten and zero at Dallas three and seven. Dallas is favored by one and a half. This is interesting. See, this is another one of those games which, like, the uh, Vegas knows something where we don't because there's no way in hell that it should be favored. Um, so I'm still taking Carolina plus the one and a half, which on paper is the safest bet you'll ever have in your life. <laughs> Until the Cowboys end up beating. Until the Cowboys win by two. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bears in the nightcap. Bears four and six at Packers seven and three. Packers are favored by eight and a half. Uh, Packers minus eight and a half for sure, no doubt. Lock it in right now. Probably the safest. This the best bet of the weekend. Really? Even yeah. better than the one that you just said was the safest bet of all time? I, I, well, that that's on paper. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Green Bay is going to whoop the piss out of them. Raiders, 4-6 and six at the Titans, 2-8. and eight. Titans, by the way, are 0-5 at home, and it's even. Oh, uh, Raiders. Bills, 5-5 five and five at Kansas City, 5-5. Five and five. Playoff implications everywhere here. Kansas City is favored at home by 7. Oof, Bills plus 7. Buccaneers. Oh, no, can I take that back? Sure, go ahead. It, do they, they know who's playing quarterback yet? For, for who, the Bills? Yeah. It's probably E.J. Manuel. Uh, Kansas City minus seven. All right. Buccaneers, five and five. At the Colts, five and five. Again, playoffs everywhere here for NFC team. Uh, Buccaneers, nobody thought would be at this. No. The Indianapolis at home is favored by three. Bucks plus three. Giants five and five against the Redskins four and six. If the Giants somehow lose this, the Redskins are tied for first. So Redskins are at home, but the Giants are favored on the road by two and a half. It's gonna be a um, a doozy. Giants are favored by two and a half. Yeah, on the road. Giants will win that game. Giants minus two and a half. Saints four and six at Texans five and five. Houston's favored by three. Houston minus three. Vikings seven and three against the Falcons six and four. It's even. Minnesota. Rams four and six against the Bengals eight and two. Bengals are up by t- are favored by ten. The Rams versus the Bengals. Um, give me uh, ten points. A lot of points. Um, against Cincinnati, the right Cincinnati minus ten. Chargers two and eight. Oh God! Against the Jaguars four and six. Jaguars are favored by four. Where is the game? Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville. Dolphins four and six at the Jets five and five. Jets are favored by three. Jets. Cardinals eight and two against the 49ers three and seven. Arizona on the road is favored by eleven and a half. Uh, San Francisco plus the points. Steelers six and four against the Seahawks five and five. Seattle's favored at home by three and a half. Seattle versus who? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh plus three and a half. You're taking correct. Okay. Patriots 10 and 0 on the Sunday night game against the Broncos 8 and 2. Patriots on the road are favored by two and a half. Patriots. And then the Ravens in the Monday night game 3 and 7 Oof. versus the Browns Oof, 2 and 8. What a game! <laughs> oh my God, snooze fest. Cleveland is favored by two and a half. Oh, at that's home. one of the one of the worst games you'll ever see in your life. What, what's the spread? Cleveland's favored by two and a half at home. Baltimore. Yeah. You have to. Cleveland's terrible. Here's the thing. Didn't they at one point? If they knew the game was going to suck, they could switch the schedule. Not ESPN. Not ESPN. Not ESPN. NFL Network does that. Is that what they do? No, not NFL Network. The they Thursday, stop doing them? The Thursday night games are the Thursday night games. Yeah. Can't change them. Play about the Monday night game. The Monday night games and Monday night game. Both of them can't so, change So them. which ones are the ones that they can change? Sunday night? Sunday night. That's the only one. Flex. Yeah. That's the only one. Uh, yeah, but they can do a number of different things. They can flex it from one to four. They can flex out of the the eight thirty game and put it at four or one, and then so the NFL and it's all the NFL. So right, the, the, they had a thing on the radio the other day that Fox is going to be get screwed because uh, NFL has all the power and they're going to give the game to the CBS or something like that. So the NFL isn't like Fox, huh? Um, I I don't think it's it's anything personal, but. That's what happens when you're personal. That's All what right. happens when the uh, zebras in America. That's what happens when you have a small penis. Here we go. Eagles, Lions. Who do you got overall? Lions. You taking the Lions at home? Mm-hmm. I'm taking the Eagles. Uh, so you just because of that guy? No, because I think the Eagles after two after the you abomination Mark Sanchez after the abomination of that that happened against Tampa at home. Yes, I'm taking the Eagles. 
Okay. You what do you have? Do you want to bet on that game? What do you want to bet? Whatever you want to bet. Just a straight pick them is what you're saying. Yeah. You have the Lions, I have the Eagles. Yeah. All right, I'll bet you $20. What? I bet $20, the Eagles win. 20 bucks. Yeah, I'm not Throw betting it. the spread. I'm betting the... Yeah, anything else? Anything no, that's else. it so far. 20 bucks. Deal. 20 bucks. All right, here we go. Okay. Shake it. Yep. All right. Panthers, Cowboys, who do you got? Panthers. Taking Detroit. I'm taking Dallas in the upset. Oh, do you want to double down? No, that one I'm not... That one I'm too scared to bet money on. Okay. But I'm taking Dallas in the upset. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, Bears, Packers. Packers. Yeah. All right. Now we have Raiders, Titans. Raiders. Yep. Bills, Chiefs. Chiefs. I also have the Chiefs. Buccaneers, Colts. Bucks. I'm taking the Colts because they're at home and Hasselbeck is playing. Who's 3-0, by the way, this year. Uh, Giants, Redskins. Giants. Yep. Saints, Texans. Texans. Vikings, Falcons. Vikings. Falcons are fucking terrible. <laughs> Rams, Bengals. Cincinnati. Chargers, Jaguars. Jags. Taking the Chargers. So that's four games we differ. Dolphins, Jets. Jets. Okay. By the way, Rivas has a concussion. Okay. He Car got lit up last week anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cardinals, 49ers. Cardinals. Okay. Steelers, Seahawks. Steelers. I'm going to go with Seattle. Okay, and that's why you're nine games back. <laughs> I'm, I'm eight games back, okay, but yeah. <laughs> sorry, games, sorry. P Patriots, Dub Broncos. Pats. All right, and then the Ravens, Browns. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a game. I know who I'm picking. It's just simple. Yeah, Baltimore. No. Who do they fuck do they have a quarterback? What about Cleveland? They have Josh McCown. He threw for 400 yards early yeah, in the season, didn't he? Matt Schaub. That shop is a thousand years old and sucks. All right, you got Baltimore. There you go. You want to bet on that one? Yeah. All right, I bet Cleveland wins. Twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm talking about. <laughs> two, three, four, five, six. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, six games. If I. And by the way, <laughs> when we've differed in you know four to seven games, Andy has never won. Yeah. No. Yeah. You mean four to seven? So I've only won like the threes. Yeah, like two and one. But yeah. any games that are four to seven, I've prevailed. By one one game or whatever, sure. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you prevail, it's true. No points for pretty. No. <laughs> so, again, guys, 6.30, Wednesday nights, you have my number. We'll call in. I know uh, Steve Goldman's already excited about it. CHCH is already excited about it. Um, yeah, we'll chat. Look, uh, any, 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 I mean, we're, we're busy guys, but we got nothing to do on Wednesday nights. Yep, we got Wednesdays or our second days off of the week. Yep. And that's what happens, baby. It's how we do. It's how we do. It's how we do up in this bitch. Yep. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you sexy fuckers next Wednesday. Yeah.